Hey guys, my name is Shai, and today's Pick a Card reading is going to focus on your energetic health, specifically your energetic balance. And I was inspired to do this because I have been feeling kind of unbalanced lately. Specifically, I've been feeling quite oversensitive, like emotionally hypersensitive and um, like psychically hypersensitive, which has been kind of cool, uh, but kind of overwhelming at the same time. And I couldn't quite get myself back into balance until somebody told me that I had a leak. <laughs> and it was kind of a funny thing to have someone say to me, but I, it instantly made everything click. Just that one sentence, you have a leak. And I immediately felt better because I realized that I have been kind of leaking out some of my energy. And I've also been letting other, other energies kind of come in and influence me and stick around longer than they need to and um you know so now I'm taking steps to kind of get back into balance but I had to have that clue <laughs> come towards me first and then immediately I started to feel better because then I knew kind of what I needed to work on so of course you guys this is just a general reading and you are all going to have very individual <laughs> special energetic kind of you know configurations happening right now but what I hope to do in these four readings is give you that kind of clue right that kind of clue maybe maybe it's just like one word or one thing and it gives you that aha so that then you can start bringing your, yourself back into balance because we're all gonna need that <laughs> no matter when you're watching this because no matter when you're watching this I can safely say that the energy has never been this intense <laughs> because it just gets more and more intense and it's like we never get a break anymore. I used to feel like, oh, we'd have, you know, some intense event and then it would calm back down and I could go live my normal kind of human life. But now it just doesn't, it doesn't stop. And even when we're in between big energetic moments, like, for example, I'm recording this in, what, what is it even? It's like September 2021. And the beginning of Virgo season, I kind of expected to be a little bit of a break. I was like, oh, this is cool. Nothing's going to be happening like astrologically or energetically. It's just going to be a little bit, bit of a good downtime. It, and it, it ended up being one of the most intense energetic weeks of the year. You know, there was like solar flares and coronal mass ejections and the whole magnetosphere of the earth was like going crazy. And this was all like measurable. And um, like, you know, if you look at the tools that scientists use to um like measure and um create visualizations of these things it was um really crazy so yeah <laughs> my point is that even when there's it seems like nothing is going on there's actually these intense really 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 intense really surprising kind of out of nowhere blasts of energy so we never really get a break anymore and that is cool and awesome and wonderful because this is teaching us to, you know, to let go <laughs> and to evolve and to rise up, but it is also constantly throwing it off throwing us off balance. But that is also part of the lesson because we are all learning to cultivate our inner balance no matter what is happening around us, right? Whether it's crazy stuff happening in our human lives or whether it's just this energy that never stops, the energetic waves that never stop, we are all going to be finding our inner balance regardless of whatever happens, whatever happens. Um, and of course, anybody who's happening upon this video is not only highly sensitive to all and any energetic fluctuations, but you are also one of the people who We'll be among the first few waves to get to really uh, master that inner balance. So it's important that we're all doing this together because we are all coming into that inner balance and then then more people will find their inner balance and then more people will find their inner balance and it will ripple out, but it has to start inside of each and every one of us. So yeah, I guess that was my tangent. I did not expect that to go for so long, but um, if you haven't already, go ahead and pick your card. It's just cards numbers one to four, and I will see you in your reading. Okay, card number one, welcome to your reading. I am going to be drawing tarot cards here. I'm using the Crow Tarot. This deck typically brings through themes of like releasing shadows and 
facing some kind of personal judgment day, <laughs> if that makes sense. Um, you know, kind of ju the judgment energy in terms of the tarot archetype, right? Uh, like um, the horn that wakes the sleepers, really um, waking up and rising up. And of course, your card here, <laughs> spiritual awakening. This is a, this is from the chakra reading cards so this particular card represents your soul star chakra coming online and you, for those of you who don't know your soul star chakra represents your your connection to your higher self like where you and your higher self are one um some of you might really actually feel it above your head like six inches you know maybe 30 centimeters up, like something like that like six inches to a foot above your head um when my first started coming online um like a year and a half ago i could Feel, it was like I had a headache above my head. Really weird, right? <laughs> um, also, just normal headaches, all that stuff. So, um, yeah, I'm just throwing that out, that out there. I drew these chakra cards to see what, um, what chakra, basically, you might be focusing on so we can get some context for the rest of this. And, you know, I haven't even... Uh, I, ha I, ha I have pre-shuffled the cards. I had shuffled these already. And the bottom of the deck says the nine of swords yeah nine of swords <laughs> so i was trying to figure is that nine or ten swords um i don't normally you know use a card when i you know this is from like pre-shuffling from before i turned on the camera but i i kept hand talking and i kept flashing this card up and i felt like it was relevant to you um nine of swords is that anxiety and restless thoughts and even psychic attacks type of feeling but since this is kind of part of the pre-shuffle and it is at the bottom of the deck i'm not going to take it out i just wanted to show it to you because this is what you're moving away from this is what you're leaving behind you're leaving behind the tyranny of your mind you're leaving behind i, I almost wanted to just say you're leaving behind your mind period um if you have lived a life of, you know, logic and anxiety and social conditioning, which almost everybody has, <laughs> right, that is going away, that is going to be part of your past and you are really, really rapidly firing up into a new level of your spiritual awakening. I wouldn't be surprised if many of you who picked this pile, if this is kind of you know, maybe your first experience of a spiritual awakening, um, you know, maybe if, you know, six months ago you were an atheist um, or you were religious in some way and now you're you're just kind of blasting past all of that and getting into very esoteric, very um, self-guided, like self-guided spirituality, getting into starseed stuff, starting to feel like you are a witch or a light worker, you know, whatever type of um, language is resonating with you, but this is like blasting out of <laughs> all of the structures, all of the mental structures, for some of you blasting out of patriarchal structures that have been holding you back, connecting with your higher self, connecting with your higher self. So yeah, I want to get these cards, <laughs> um, these tarot cards to find out how your, like, how your balance is. Over here, I'm going to be drawing cards for, oh, you got the lovers, um, energy that is overbalanced, if that makes sense, energy that you have an abundance of, <laughs> the lovers, the empress, very cool, <laughs> and the, <laughs> are you kidding me? <laughs> okay, so, um, yeah. uh, let me just draw the other ones, I was going to say that these are the ones that you have an abundance of and these are the ones that you could use more of I was you know gonna try and lay them out like a like the scales of justice right although it's weird I I was thinking about that backwards wasn't I if there's a scales the one, this part of the scale that is higher up is the energy that is lighter, is the energy that is lighter. And this is the energy that is heavier. I think I just learned an important lesson about how to view this. It's not about needing more or less of the energy. It's about 
energies are they lighter or are they heavier right lighter or heavier energies that's interesting so i was it's 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 funny this this happens to me i i learn these lessons as i <laughs> as i do these things so that is the way i am being shown to think about this yeah you guys have more more stuff that you're moving on from three of swords this time moving on from heartbreak you guys are moving on from heartbreak and anxiety the bottom of the deck to me is always what you're moving away from what has been in your past so good on you guys for having survived whatever it is you have recently been through okay down here in the heavier energies six of wands victory Eight of Cups, Spiritual Journey, and Temperance. This feels like striving for material victory or striving for material gains. Um, like this seven of wands or sorry the six of wands it's the card of victory card of triumph is a very positive card but when it kind of it's coming through with this kind of heavier denser energies this energy that is kind of holding that it's the energy that is kind of keeping the scale out of balance right it is heavier it is pulling this side down that tells me that this is kind of suggesting that you're worrying too much about material victory worrying too much about the 3d and that's not in it of itself bad but you have this massive spiritual awakening happening and you have this <laughs> amazing positive beautiful bountiful abundant loving energy over here with the lovers the empress and the hierophant um that you're really being guided to lighten up on how you deal with the 3d specifically if you are if you have a 3d problem right like how do i pay the rent i need a better job i have this person i can't get rid of i have these human problems blah 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 right if of course the only way you know of to solve your problems is to do something human to solve your problems right that's of course how we operate the trouble is now it's spiritual awakening time. Now it's ascension time. Now the 3D problem, like solving your 3D problems in that way is actually just keeping you down, right? If you have a 3D problem and you're trying to fix it by like, you know, you're trying to, you try to pay the rent by working harder, by like working more overtime or something, right? Or you're trying to fix this person in your life because you, by arguing with them and trying to get them to change that those things will, they will never work. And they specifically will not work because doing that is just entertaining the 3D. It's entertaining this old energy. It is entertaining the old energy. So it is time to walk away from that. It is time to release the 3D because we need to release the 3D in order to rise up, in order to lighten our frequency, in order to become our higher selves, right? In order to really bring your soul star chakra online and embody your higher self it's all about releasing the 3d so this is like this is a theme coming up over and over and over for myself and for everybody it's like we have to stop the old ways of solving our problems um just today my husband and i were doing some accounting trying to figure out how we were gonna like pay to fix the car right and <laughs> I, and i just kept thinking like this is not how we're gonna solve the problem right i I'd probably have better luck manifesting money by going out into the park and meditating right <laughs> and like doing and grounding and raising my frequency and then, then the money will mysteriously come through i'm never gonna like pay for this stupid car repair by you know worrying about it and then trying to micromanage how i make money it's just it's never gonna work because that's the old 3d way it's and and that just lowers my frequency, right? Worrying about your 3D problems in a 3D way lowers your frequency and keeps you down. That it, they're like your 3D problems are like anchors attached to your legs. You need to cut the anchors so that you can lighten the load and float up. And this is like so emphasized here with this Eight of Cups, all about, you know. Yes, this is the card of turning your back on something, but it's also the card of the spiritual journey, of the spiritual awakening. This is leaving security and certainty behind and looking for something better, right? With the Eight of Cups, maybe you've you've had it okay. 
you know, you, you were pretty happy with where you were and you were content, maybe things were okay, or, you know, maybe things weren't okay and you know you can do better. But the point is, even if things were good and even if things were okay and you were satisfied, you can still do better. This is leaving it behind, searching for something better, searching for that higher truth, searching for that broader experience, searching for the next horizon, right? Really going onwards and upwards. So this is all to get you up and elevated out of the 3D, you know, really with temperance. This is a difficult, <laughs> this is a difficult card. This is a difficult energy because it's kind of like uh, a friend of mine always says it's the hurry up and wait card. And it can definitely feel that way. I, I love, really like that way of describing it. And it's also the card of being forged in fire. And it's also the card of rising up out of the ashes, finding that inner core of strength. So with with this, this is like Sagittarius energy, right? It's rising up, rising up, rising up. So the 3D is, is keeping you guys down. And the more you worry about your 3D human problems, that is what is keeping you down. And it's because there are so many more high frequency, beautiful experiences for you, right? The lovers, I mean, for some of you, this is a romantic thing, but this, the lovers isn't just, isn't, isn't only a romantic thing. It is also the connection with your higher self. This is like the lovers is a card of spiritual awakening, right? I don't know why I just remembered this, but I'm going to throw this out there. Um, on the day I first heard of star seeds, I went to my tarot deck, which was also the first day I got a, 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 a which is also the day I bought my first deck of tarot cards, right? It all happened at the same time. Um, and I was like, huh, am I a star seed? And I pulled a card and I got the lover's card. And I, at that time I didn't know how to read cards. I didn't know really what the lovers meant. And I was just confused. I was like, huh, I guess that's a yes. Like maybe does that mean that me and my husband are both star seeds? I mean, of course that was also true. But what I didn't understand at the time was that this card was was me putting like myself and my star seed self together, right? Myself and my higher self together. This was like a huge massive yes. This is a very spiritual card and it's about connecting with your higher self through love and connecting with your higher self as if as if your higher higher self is your lover, right? Um hard to describe. If you haven't had the experience, I don't really know how to describe it, but you can connect with your higher self by loving your higher self as if your higher self is your lover, right? I, I don't know. I don't know how to describe that. It's just imagine the, the amount of love that you would pour into your most ideal lover, like your fantasy lover, right? Feel that love, feel that passion, feel that feeling. You can use that energy to pierce the veil and connect with your higher self because your higher self is sending you that kind of love. Your, your higher self is sending you all frequencies of love. Um, but I feel like, you know, this using your lover energy or using your sacred sexual energy isn't often talked about really outside of Tantra. So maybe Tantra is interesting to some of you, but you know, it doesn't need to be experienced with a physical partner. It can be experienced between you and your higher self. And, um, okay. And so the other things with this lighter, this lighter energy, this is energy that you want to put more emphasis on, right? Because if you put more emphasis on this energy, it will balance the scales. This is what's coming through for you. But right now it's like too much of your attention is being bogged down in the 3d. You want more of your attention on, first of all, your higher self. Second of all, you want more attention on your higher self because <laughs> okay? the high, the higher fant is represents another way of connecting with your higher self, the vertical connection, like straight up, right? The lovers is this kind of dual energy. It's you and your higher self as two equal beings, right? Not you being some small fraction or fragment or child of your higher self that the, the lovers is representing you and your higher self being mirror images of each other right and, and the fact that you don't have access to all of the memories and the thoughts and the intelligence of your higher self right now doesn't make you any less doesn't make you any less right you're different you have you have <laughs> you have your own special human abilities and you are every bit you look you are your higher self right i think there's just something here when we first wake up and we first start thinking about the idea of the higher self, this is, I mean, this is a mistake that I made, right? So I'll talk about from my perspective. I'm the example. I was like, okay, my higher self is almost like 
it, it's some other thing. It's something outside of me. It's this thing that's far away from me. It's this thing I need to like get get to, right? But now I know that like I your higher self is literally you. Like my higher self is literally me. Literally me. Yes, it is a more expanded like multi-dimensional version of me, but that is also me. Like it's all just me. And I know that might not make sense. It probably sounds like I'm contradicting myself, but when we're talking about this multi-dimensional stuff, everything is contradictory because it is multi-dimensional, right? It, it, it's a, but wait for the experiences. The experiences will make this make sense. It doesn't make this make sense. And the higher fence is also representing the connection to your higher self, which is what I was trying to say. And it's provides a slightly different way of thinking about how you connect to your higher self. The Hierophant, um, you know, this archetype is rooted in like older times, basically, you know, all of these past thousands of years on earth when the veil was very, very thick and it was a lot harder to pierce the veil, right? You actually had to make, like, you weren't just, how do I explain? It's like an internet connection, right? Now we have a super ultra fast fiber line to our higher selves, right? 2000 years ago, we had, or, you know, even like even 50 years ago, right? Even, even 10 years ago <laughs> before 2012, we, we had like dial up internet, or maybe it was even like snail mail, right? Connection to your higher self. And the, the Hierophant makes that transmission between human self and higher self. It makes the transmission and it does see it in this more vertical way. So you are invited here to explore different ways of connecting with your higher self. One is seeing your higher self as your your other half, seeing your higher self as your lover, right? As your yin to your yang or your yang to your yin. Higher self um, really inviting you to get that vertical connection. Um, and as I said that, I felt my spine snap up and I like sat up into like a meditative pose. Of course, you can meditate in any position that you want. You don't need to be sitting, you know, in the lotus position going like this, right? But uh, for some of you doing some like traditional meditation, um, like specifically like Vipassana meditation, mindfulness meditation with specific practices might unlock something for you. And that's not because there's anything... I mean, there, there are things that are special about Vipassana meditation and that is really cool and good, but it's not really about having the right tricks or the right strategies or the right techniques because your higher self doesn't care what techniques you use. Your higher self just wants you to open up and be willing to connect, right? But specifically for you guys, if, if you feel like Vipassana meditation might, if that's like, you know, giving you tingles, right? Um, it's because you have had lots of success and experience with that in past lives. So this is actually doing with doing the things that you've done in past lives so that you can synchronize with and then download those experiences and that will help you open up your connection to your higher self. And finally is Empress card. This brings all of this kind of abstract higher self, um, you know, veil piercing energy back down to earth. And this is also getting to like reminding you that you are your own boss, right? You are the queen or the king or the ruler, whatever it is. You own yourself. You own your experience on earth. You create your own, your own reality. This is all about owning it and bringing this all in and then not getting lost in the clouds. I think you guys might be kind of wiffle waffling between like worrying about 3D problems, trying to figure out your human life, and then having like transcendent ex transcendent experiences or maybe just being lost in daydreams whatever it is right feeling like wiffle waffling kind of like you know this could be somebody who works hard all week at their job um doing like data entry or like something really you know mundane and boring and then on the weekend um does like an ayahuasca ceremony and you know has this beautiful connection but then it's not really coming together right it's not coming together it's like you're kind of on and off, on and off with your spirituality, which is fine. That's how, that's how we begin, right? <laughs> but as you walk your path, those distinctions begin to disintegrate and eventually you find yourself living in an almost constant state of meditation, an almost constant state of like spiritual practice. It becomes everything because you do increase your frequency so much where you're not really in the 3D anymore. I mean, yes, you are here, but you're aware of all of the aspects of yourself that are above the 3D and out there. And so 
you you cease to live your life the way you used to because you're so connected. <laughs> you're so connected with your higher self. So <sighs> I think to try and summarize <laughs> your guys' energetic balance is just really inviting you to stop focusing on the 3D. Stop focusing on your on the 3D. Especially stop looking for 3D direction, right? If you're asking, what do I do? What should I do? Is there something I should be doing? What's my direction? Nah. Those, those are the wrong questions, <laughs> right? Because any answer to those questions will, will just give you 3D answers, right? The only like way to get out of this 3D quagmire, 3D maze is to point upwards, right? Your only direction is upwards. And even, even that is just a metaphor, right? That, then that's fine. That's a metaphor that helps get your, your, your mind kind of thinking about becoming your higher self. If you, cause you probably have the idea that your higher self is above you. Cause we're even using the word higher self, right? And that's all fine. It's fine. So to just roll with the metaphor, point yourself upwards, right? If you need a direction, it's upwards. If you need something to do, it's do nothing, right? The yoga of non-doing, the art of non-doing, non-attachment, and it's focusing on your connection to spirit, whatever that means for you, right? And rising up and raising your frequency. So you want to be bringing in more of the transcendent energy and releasing the denser 3D energies. That will bring you into into balance, to more balance, <laughs> and that will make you more aware of what's going on with your soul star chakra. Some of you are even feeling it, but if you don't feel it, don't worry. That doesn't mean that it's not happening. It just means that you, you're you not like configured to sense it that way. It doesn't, it doesn't mean that it's not happening. And um, what, what I'm feeling is like, your soul star chakra is like opening and closing like a portal. So <laughs> there is potential there, like either when you're meditating or f for most of you, probably it'll start to happen when you're asleep in your dreams, you'll be going through portals in your dreams. Um, you can also go through portals when you're meditating. I've done it. If you have to drop into a deep meditative trance and then like a portal sometimes appears in front of me, this hasn't happened in a while, but it happened a lot when I first woke up portal would appear in front of me and it would always be all wiggly like squiggly and it would be like moving like this but it would be squiggly and I would have to say yes 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 I'm ready to like I'm ready to go like take me I'm ready to go through the portal then I go through the portal and then I couldn't remember anything um but that portal if you guys experience anything like a portal it's the portal of your soul star chakra and when you go through that that's on the other side is your higher self and that's how you that's how you merge with your higher self so but to do that in order to merge with your higher self drop out of the 3D and bring down more transcendent energy. I think that is the end of your guys' messages. So I love you guys. I'll talk to you later. Bye. Hey, card number two, welcome to your reading. I hope you guys like cats because I was like very, very strongly guided to use this deck for you guys, the Grimmelkin, Grimmelkin Tarot. It's all about cats. Every every card has a cat on it. And um, a few months ago, when my cat left his body, I used this deck to like receive messages about him and and communicate with him and stuff. So this deck is really important to me. And when I drew your chakra card, uh, I was like overwhelmed with like shivers and sparkles and and energy. I don't know what it is, <laughs> what it is with you guys, but we're going to find out. So just one, this is a chakra card, and then I'm going to draw extra tarot cards with it. Forgiveness. This is obviously a heart chakra card. It's green, emerald green. <sighs> Opening up to self-forgiveness. That gives me a bit of a clue about why I was drawn towards this deck because of course after my cat Bear, after he left his body, I felt like it was my fault. <laughs> Even though it was not my fault, he chose his time to go. It was his choice, it was his agency. And I took such good care of him that even though he had been, uh, he had had 
He'd been on um, like special food for kidney disease because he was like an 18 year old cat and that's really common for old cats to have kidney disease. And I've taken such good care of him that his kidneys actually improved um, in the last two years of his life. And that's like almost unheard of, the vet said. And, but I still felt like I, I still felt like I just like, why, why didn't I do more for him, right? Why didn't I do more? And it took a long time for me to forgive myself. So I'm, I'm sharing this because I think you guys um, might be experiencing something like that. Um, I mean, obviously for some of you, this could be having to forgive other people. But more and more, I feel that forgiving yourself and forgiving others, it's like one thing. Um, and I have another personal example just to share before I draw your cards because I feel like this is relevant. Um, yeah, okay, I'm just, I'm just going to go all in. Okay, so when stuff started happening in Afghanistan, I felt guided to, you know, sit and send unconditional love and forgiveness and compassion to everyone in Afghanistan, right? <laughs> everyone, all, all humans in Afghanistan. And... So that's what I did. And then a couple days later, um, in a dream, except it wasn't, a, it wasn't even a dream. I was awake and I asked to see who was I, who was I in, I, I, I used a specific term. I said, historical figure. I was like, who was I in history? Who was I in history is what I asked. And then I saw um, uh, like a man in a Nazi uniform Okay, and I was like, eh. <laughs> and and it was me. And honestly, I still don't know how to make sense of that because I know that I had a different life. I had a different life. I, I know I know what life I lived through World War II, and I was not a Nazi. I was an American, um, and I was a surgeon. And <laughs> um, but so I was really really confused like why why am i seeing myself as a nazi this is bizarre how how do i even like come to terms with this and it was a weird vision because i i was i was volunteering to die for my cause and and my my kids were over there and they were upset that i i was volunteering to to die so i was a nazi who was volunteering to die and but the the main point of the vision was that I was volunteering to die and abandon my children basically they were like older older i think teenagers or something but that was the focus of the vision. It wasn't so much focusing on the fact that I was a Nazi. It was like, you, decide, you decided to die for your cause and abandon your children. And, um, and I was like, okay, how do, I, how do I deal with this, right? How do I deal with this? <laughs> um, first of all, I, I, I think it's, I know, I know that it's possible for us to have like overlapping lives. Like you could have another version of yourself like walking around on the planet right now, like with your, your same soul, right? P um, parallel lives in terms of like really, really parallel, like alive at the same time. Um, it could also just be from different timelines of the planet, stuff like that. Um, just to clarify on that. So but <laughs> anyway, the point of this, how does this relate to forgiveness? So I had to come to terms with the fact that I had just seen myself in a very, very clear, vivid image after asking for it, I saw myself as this parallel life as a Nazi. Uh, and, um, but I, I, I mean, I'm still struggling with this a little bit, but for the most part, I felt that I could understand it and forgive myself for that because I had already had the experience of essentially sending unconditional love to the Taliban. You see how that's connected, right? I, it's like, I couldn't, I never had any memories of me like have, living bad lives, right? I always remembered me of being a victim. In all of my lives, I was always a victim of something. I was always the innocent victim, right? And I was always like, that's a little weird. I mean, I've lived like so many millions of lives. I must have had some lives where I was the bad guy, but I never remembered any. Yeah, I never remembered any until I had proved myself able of sending unconditional love to people who are currently being the bad guys, right? So <laughs> it it like unlocked... My ability to hold unconditional love for all others also allowed me to hold unconditional love and forgiveness for myself in everything that I had done. And um, I'm honestly having like a kind of a mini panic attack of a kid <laughs> um, talking about how I had a past life as a Nazi. Uh, and I'm going to post this video on YouTube. <laughs> but, uh, I guess the... Um, I actually haven't even told my husband about that. Here, am I really going to post this? I guess I will. So I guess I will.
because I think my experience is somehow related, somehow relevant for you guys. And um, yeah, so I'm gonna move on from that lovely topic. <sighs> Let me just get the cards out. <laughs> Ten of Cups. Ten of Wands. You guys are burdened. Burdened with something. And... This, man, this reading is heavy. This card came out. I mean, this this is a beautiful card. This is unity consciousness, right? This is source unity down here. Um, when my cat bear left his body, I drew two cards for him. One of them um, basically symbolized to me where he went. <laughs> and this is the card I got. He got unity and like cats, like unity cat consciousness, right? <laughs> I was like, what, <laughs> what a beautiful thing. What a, what a beautiful, amazing card to have come out. I could not have imagined a better card coming out. So like, not that I really doubted that, you know, that bear had returned to source, but this card came out to tell me like, yeah, right. He's, <laughs> he's with the universal mind. He's in unity consciousness. He is good. Um, let me try to fix this lighting. No, that's not good. Um, yeah, I'll just make sure to hold those cards up. So, <sighs> these are lopsided for a reason. These are the these are the energies that are weighing you down, right? These are the energies that are weighing you down that are, are a little bit heavy, and you want to lighten this load. You want to lighten the load over here. Ten of Wands is you have been carrying a really long burden and for you guys this is going to be the thing you need to forgive what burden do you need to release is it feeling like like you've done something wrong is it is it self-forgiveness is it, are there things in your past maybe things in your past lives that you just simply can't forgive you can't get over is that a burden you've been carrying this whole time or is this are you burdened by the the deeds of others is what I just heard. Are you burdened by the deeds of others? All right, with this unity conscious with this unity card, this unity consciousness card, it, it feels like you, some of you are really burdened by the state of the collective, right? By the state of humanity, by the state of the planet. Um, like really feeling like bitterness. I can almost taste the bitterness on the back of my tongue, right? You can almost taste the bitterness on the back of my tongue. This bitterness, um, this despair needs to be released also with this unity card coming up um like boundaries uh you guys like absorbing everybody else's stuff right absorbing everybody else's stuff feeling this is all this is actually almost um too much compassion like compassion that has gone like akimbo <laughs> what is it what, akimbo is that a word i've heard that word before but like a, a compassion that has almost become dark right compassion that is so out of control that it's torturing you. you you know feeling so much compassion for people that have suffered um but since since you're unable to feel unconditional love and since you're una unable to forgive the perpetrators the despair or the situation of the victim, whoever is being victimized, it's like making your compassion be so unbalanced that it's almost become a thing of darkness. If that makes sense. I'm just, those words I think are kind of extreme and I kind of apologize for that, but I just I think that's the only way I could be clear. Um, but really the, the message here is to like lighten up <laughs> to, to to lighten up to find a higher perspective right and uh but before i, I kind of go into that rant i wanted to mention this three of wands this three of wands to me in in this deck feels like somebody somebody's waiting for an external savior waiting for a savior either or like waiting for others to change you're waiting for something outside of you to happen because this card it, the three of wands is, is about like a return on an, an investment something coming back to you but in its kind of negative 
like situation down here in this heavy energy this is waiting for things to be fixed waiting for someone to save you or waiting for someone to save the planet or waiting for someone or waiting for events to change so that you can feel peace right but peace won't come from the outside peace cannot be made it can only be discovered internally and if we want to have peace on earth and of course we do <laughs> then the only way to get there is for everyone to feel inner peace to discover that inner peace on the inside and that is where you are going right this is where you are going we have four of wands i mean sorry four of swords this is the card of healing deep deep healing okay deep <laughs> deep healing to your guys's heart chakras um like if there's so many different ways to go about this right so just to throw out ideas if you feel called if you feel inspired to seek out like heart chakra healing or like ancestral healing for some of you but this is also it could be ancestral healing healing but it's also quantum life healing like karmic healing way back to all of your past lives like for star seeds watching this 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 stuff goes back to orion and what also just popped into my head is atlantis right these lives where we um had such extreme polarity where there were extreme you know evil dark controlling beings and then there were beings of extreme like victimization right like, like people who just were tortured and killed and also like pl planets having been destroyed like stars having died and like atlantis like falling right all like all of these timelines and what i will say is for i won't say all of you because nothing is nothing is 100 percent certain um, but for most of you most of us because you guys are old 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 souls right old souls you guys are like old soul star seeds for everybody who resonates as a star seed this is like you have been on both sides of the polarity because you don't just experience one side of polarity you always experience both sides of polarity i mean i said always because almost always right almost always I, I i honestly i don't know how it would work for like an old soul starseed to have only experienced one side of the polarity i suppose that is possible but i personally i don't know how that would work right i understand everything to be the experience of duality we experience all polarities and like both sides both sides of the of the spectrum both ends of the spectrum we experience extreme levels of love and light and we experience the complete lack of love and light right the complete lack um but rising now is a, right now you your your goal here is to heal your heart and to forgive this so that you can rise above the the the, the duality of dark and light right rising above the duality of dark and light because the, there's there's tough lessons here for you guys learning Learning how to get past that stumbling block. Learning how to get past that stumbling block that is duality, right? You need to like aim yourselves up into unity consciousness so that you're no longer in the game of dark and light, dark and light, dark and light. Um, I feel like some of you might be quite fixated on like ideas of the war between good and evil or, you know getting revenge on people who have done evil, rooting out all evil, those kind of things. Um, what I will say is that type of thinking is normal because that is, that's what we have been experiencing on earth because we have had so many lifetimes of being the victims and of being oppressed and of having no other way. Like we, we had this experience of having to fight the war, right? We were in the war, we were in the battle, we were having to fight darkness but that's not the case anymore we're in so much higher frequencies we are trying to get ourselves over the bump so that we can be on the other side of polarity and the other side of polarity is unity consciousness right unity consciousness and 
at some point you need, like this is kind of like a tough love thing I feel like I'm supposed to tell you guys, at some point you need to face the fact that you need to be able to hold non-judgment, you need to be able to hold unconditional love for all beings, all beings. And that's important because I feel like you are, one of the reasons we experience the like polarity of dark and light is so that we can sit in the light <laughs> and then look at people who are currently in the dark forgive them, don't judge them, and then hold unconditional love for them because when we do that for them, we do it for ourselves. We do it for ourselves, right? It's like those people only went dark side so that they could show you how to forgive yourself. Because forgiving, you know, forgiving them is forgiving yourself. Forgiving yourself is forgiving them. We are all aspects of one consciousness, right? So like, some of you might want to read the raw material, the law of one, the raw material. It, it, it's like, yeah, it, it just really transmits the frequencies of the law of one so that you can start to vibrate that way so that you, so that you can get out of the trap of thinking like good versus evil, right? Or that light needs to defeat the darkness or that, you know, that light workers are light warriors and that light warriors should fight the darkness. But it's like, no, the, the light doesn't need to fight the darkness. The, the light just needs to exist. And there will be no darkness if the light exists. So dropping out of the idea of having to fight the darkness and just shine your light. And the thing is, um, another part of one of the, like the tricks to this, the di one of the difficult things here is that, um, How do I explain? My mind just like drew a complete blank. <laughs> okay, came back to me. So if when we feel that we need to be light warriors who fight the darkness, we feel like that feeling of righteousness, that feeling of like fighting for justice and that feeling of being afraid of the dark, the feelings of judging the dark and the feeling of pointing the finger at the dark and then gonna fight the dark and then gonna like, you know, all of those feelings, they feel like they're based in the light, but are they really? Are they really guys? Because think about it, those feelings are based in fear, they're based in judgment and they're based in duality. They're not based in unconditional love, right? They're, they're not, they're, they're fear and they're judgment and, and so <laughs> if you truly want to be a light worker, so drop out of that idea of being the light warrior because light warriors are just engaging in polarity. They're engaging in judgment and they're engaging in conditional love, right? They're saying if, if you're a light warrior and you're going to go fight the evil, then you're saying that those, those people over there who are just other aspects of yourself all being one consciousness, right? All being different facets of one consciousness. Those people who are playing in the dark, who are doing, yes, yes, they are doing bad things, right? They are, we're not saying that they're not. They are doing bad things. They are causing suffering to others, but it's like, <laughs> if you're over there gonna fight them, that is conditional love. That if you're saying that you have to be like me, you have to be of the light, That that's not unconditional love. That's conditional love, right? So if, you want to be the purest, most loving, most high frequency, most source-like being that you can, it is to hold unconditional love for all. Unconditional love for all, not conditional love for, for good people. Unconditional love for all. Um, so yeah, this is like bring your perspective up to the source perspective, right? Like, it's like, <laughs> um, like what would source do? What would source think, right? Um, you know, when I was a kid, I was raised Christian and I would wear a, a bracelet. You know, what would Jesus do? It was one of those WWJD bracelets, right? What would Jesus do? And of course, the, but <laughs> the, the way I was raised in Christianity, I, I now I understand didn't really have anything to do with Christ consciousness, right? I, I was taught to judge others. I was taught to have conditional love for others. And I was taught to like be critical of others and, and it was terrible. Now I understand that if I, if I, now I could wear one of those now as like somebody who went from being a Christian to being an atheist now to being like a, you know, starseed weird person. Um, 
now I could wear one of those bracelets, what would Jesus do? And I would know every time I looked at that, I would go, <laughs> Christ would, would just love, unconditional love. That's it. That's what Jesus would do. <laughs> so, you know, like that. And yeah, <sighs> look at this card. Three of Pentacles, opening this window and the light, the light coming in the window. This is like this this is the sun here, the sun representing the light of source. There there is like a glass, it's like a glass ceiling separating you from source and it's you just need to open that window to let more of the light flow through. Let more of the light flow through. Um allow yourself to be more like source. Allow your or you know, whatever it is to you, source, god, the goddess, most high, whatever. Allow yourself to be more like that. Allow yourself to be more unconditional, to be more based in unity consciousness and you will you will. Ten of cups. Two little kittens. One dark, one light. United under this singular glow. This is the ten of cups with this one cup here. That's, to me, that's the holy grail. What does the holy grail represent? The holy grail represents the pure light of source, right? The light of God, the light of source, like the pure essence of love and light. Dark and light kitty united under the one light and this has all been very heavy very intense but <laughs> it's because this there's like a something in your guys's heart chakra that needs to come out and you will be led through experiences that will bring you out of it and it will this will like like literally what I'm seeing is like a sludgy black rock is kind of large lodged in your heart chakra. And I mean, you have reasons for having it there. It's you, you put it there because you had so many horrific experiences in your dissension journey, right? Your dissension journey was so hard. You had to go through so much trauma to get here. You had to go through so much trauma to get here. Of course you have this horrible piece of coal lodged in your heart chakra. Of course you do. <laughs> but now is the time to heal that. Now is the time to let that go. Now is the time to forgive everyone, including yourself. Now is the time to hold unconditional love for all beings in the multiverse, for all beings, remembering that we are all one, really tuning into the law of one and really allowing your your allowing the source perspective to come through. Remembering that we are all one and holding unconditional love for all. Unconditional love for all. So, ah, man, you guys are going to feel so much better when you work through this pocket of energy. Once this phase of heart healing uh, moves through for you, you <laughs> you're going to feel like, like you've lost 100 pounds. <laughs> so, I love you guys. Sending you so much love and light. Bye. Hey, card number three, welcome to your reading. I've got a chakra card here for the kind of central message, and then I'm gonna draw more cards from the wisdom of the oracle to get a kind of clue about your energetic balance. Okay, throat chakra, chakra, little, 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 little. I can talk, throat chakra. <laughs> but interestingly, look at this, this is card number 21, listening, listening. This highlights that there's more to the throat chakra than simply speaking your truth. Of course, that is a huge, massive part of it. And when you first learn about chakras, that's kind of the first thing you associate with the throat for most people. It was for me anyway. Um, but it's more than that. It's also obviously like communication, right? The blue ray of communication and communication going both ways. This is... Um, I can feel this in my throat. I got like a lump. <laughs> um, this is allowing your throat to be a, not just a transmitter, but also a receiver. How do you receive information through your throat chakra? I think we typically think of receiving information like through our crown, because our crown is a receiver and a transmitter. Um, obviously re we receive lots of information through our third eye because it sees, it receives, right? But this is like, Almost like you guys have been doing too much expressing um, or too much giving away. This, this, this. For some of you, this could be too much self-expression, too much, um, like. I, I don't mean I don't mean to imply that this is like an arrogant or bad thing, but this. 
I can just kind of imagine somebody who's got like, you know, rainbow colored hair and who dresses in a really like cool, unique way of like tattoos and piercings, you know, like, like a really like interesting person who really likes to express themselves and it's really important for them to express their individuality. Um, but at the same time, they might feel kind of threatened when people come to them and want to share about themselves because because you feel I want, I want to, I'm trying to be like very specific about <laughs> what the vibe I'm getting here it's like you feel like people are a threat people are a threat to you um, and this is like a deep unconscious thing, right? Maybe it was stuff that happened to you as a kid. You know, maybe maybe you were abused as a kid or maybe you were bullied um, or maybe it's past life stuff where, you know, you've been betrayed so many times. Um, and now when people walk up to you, you immediately just feel like they're a threat. I know what that's like. That That is honestly, that's still me. <laughs> I feel like people are a threat. <laughs> when people walk up to me, I immediately put on my bitchy resting face and that's how I filter out people. Um, I keep people like at a distance because... Um, yeah, like when I was a kid, I learned that, I learned that humans are a threat to me. So I've all my life I've learned to keep people at a distance um, because they're threatening. And uh, but okay, so I have one other thing to add to this. Um, also, you feel like people are threatening because you are so psychically sensitive. You have no idea how psychically sensitive you are. You you are picking up on their energy, and it is overwhelming you, overwhelming you. And um, especially like before you woke up. You know, I mean, some of you probably have been awake your whole lives. Some of you were like me and maybe woke up recently. Um, so you had no idea that you were literally absorbing other people's energy. And that was why you had so much anxiety around people. And that's why people feel like so much of a threat because you're absorbing it. You're absorbing their energy. Oh, you got <laughs> truth be told. Open up your heart. Speak from your heart. Speak from your heart, not your mind. Why? Why, why, why do you feel this way? Flexible community <sighs> I have been watching a bunch of videos by the crappy childhood fairy she she is a really cool youtuber I highly recommend her channel um, she, most of her stuff is about complex PTSD and I don't really know much about that and I don't have it, but I've found her videos like so interesting and so inspiring and just so like really good. Like she, she's, you know, doing, she, maybe she doesn't know that she's a light worker, but she definitely is. And she's transmitting healing frequencies through her videos and she's awesome. Um, and she has been taught, like she, th these cards remind me of this kind of stuff she's been talking about. She talks about, a. she uses the word crap fit, right? People who were abused and neglected as children um, learn this way of fitting themselves to crappy relationships like friendships, work relationships, and romantic relationships, right? They just go, okay, this is okay, this is okay, I can, I can work with this, I can like, I can make this work, it's okay, it's fine, even when it's really, really not. So that's, that's something that I'm getting from you guys because these energies, I put them lower down because it's this, I'm trying to like represent like a scale here, right? These are the denser, heavier energies that you want to lighten up on, that you want a little bit less of, right? These are dragging you down a little bit. Flexible community. <laughs> so this is like, you guys are being way too accommodating. Okay, well, I mean, maybe that was a little bit, you know, unnecessarily, <laughs> extreme in my manner of speech there but you know to, to varying degrees you guys are being ac too accommodating for others um too too willing to it's not conforming you guys are something interesting because i keep getting this image of this really like 
independent individual type of person this like creative independent person um so it does it's like you guys are the opposite of conformists you guys aren't conformists you guys are different you guys are unique right but so how, in what way then in what way do you guys bend to your community it, like so you know, someone might look at you and go, okay, well, that person isn't really into social conditioning because they're so unique and different. And But there's something, there is something in your life about the way that you are bending. You are bending. You are somehow molding yourself to others. You are uh, like changing yourself to others. Is this like... This is tough because it feels like you guys might not even know what this is yourself. This could be some kind of big wake-up call. Um, for example, maybe you suddenly you wake up one morning and you're like, I can't believe I've been in this relationship for six years. This this relationship, I, like until I went to bed last night, I thought this relationship was good. But you wake up today and you go, oh my God, I cannot stand to be in this relationship one minute longer. And you go, what was I thinking? Like, what was I thinking? Why, why was I with this person? This is not good. This is not what I want. Or, you know, or put that to any other situation, like with a job. But in some way, you have been... Um, there's like some aspect of your life that isn't really true to who you are, even though most of in most areas of your life, you're, you're quite true to yourself and you're self-expressive and you want to be your own person. But there's like some area of your life where that has like really fallen through the cracks. And uh, so f my personal example for this was, um, you know, for years, I, I was trying to follow the path of really being completely rational, completely logical and only ever using my mind to navigate the world, right? And um, then I remembered one day, I was like, well, how did I ever get like this? Like when I was a kid, I was like a little fairy child, like that just, you know, literally talked to fairies and believed in magic and <laughs> was completely like emotional and intuitive. How did I ever end up being this like heartless, logic, science, like machine robot person, right? It was it was so weird. I was like, how did this, how did this happen? How did, how did I get here? How did I, how did I become the opposite of who I am, right? So, Something like that with you guys. How have you come become the opposite of who you really are? Look back deep into like your earliest childhood memories and go, are you really living? Are you letting your inner child come out to play? Are you really being your true to your innermost self? You might think you are <laughs> because we all think we are, right? You wouldn't be doing it deliberately. But it's like feels like somewhere along the way, you've lost a little bit of that inner spark, lost a little bit of that inner child. Something in you has has like you've sacrificed part of your inner child to kind of make life easier, right? You, you were just trying to make life easier and you were just trying to get by in the only way you could figure out. So you were getting by, but now it's time to reclaim that, right? Reclaim that. It's going to take um, opening up your heart. Truth be told, look at this owl. Owl opening up the portal to your heart and letting your heart speak, right? Don't let your social conditioning speak. Don't even let your throat speak, <laughs> right? This is communicating from your heart and it feels like needing a heart to heart with yourself, needing a heart to heart with your inner child, like with your childhood self, with your, with your mini self. <sighs> this card, this why, there's this little, I'm trying to see. I actually have such poor vision. You guys, you know, even on the camera, might be able to see this card better than me. Looks like this little person has wings. The book has wings. Um, this little person is kind of like, why did you forsake me? <laughs> why did you turn your back on me? I want to come out and play, right? This is, it feels like your inner child. That's the, that, that term is just, that's the term that's here to stay. So that's what I'll roll with. Your inner child wants to come out and play. Your inner child wants to come back, right? To bring back the balance because... I'm sorry about that glare. There's nothing, nothing I can do about it. <laughs> um, your inner child wants to come back because your inner child has been buried. Your inner child has been buried. <sighs> listen. Listen to your heart. That is how your inner child speaks to you. If there's something you don't like about your life and you just keep putting it off, I actually know somebody in my 
in my real physical human life who has been in a relationship for eight years or, or more. The relationship is always pretty good, but they're getting like overwhelmed because their partner wants to spend like all their time together, right? And this person is very introverted and wants to need needs like needs alone time, right? Needs that solitude cannot always be spending all of their time together. And this has been going on for like a long time. And this person is getting completely burnt out and is just exhausted. And I just had to tell them like, well, <laughs> obviously you, you just need to like speak up and put your foot down. And they said, well, you know, my partner insists, my partner insists of spending all of our time together. And I know both these people, like they're both like healthy, like normal people. There's nothing like, you know, weird, like, you know, abusive going on in this relationship, but clearly both of these people are stressed and they have different needs and it's nobody's needs are being met. Right. <laughs> and so I'm telling my friend, like you, you need to like, you, you need to insist back, right. You need to tell your partner, like <laughs> you need, you need, you cannot spend all of your time together. You need to have solitude. You need to have alone time. You need to insist on this, right. You need to insist on this, but they just keep saying, Oh, I can't. There's always something else. I don't want to start a fight. It'll be dramatic. You know, we have all these other problems. I'm trying to be there for them. I'm trying to be supportive, blah, 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 blah. Well, you know, at the end of the day, like your needs are not going to get met unless you put your foot down at some point, right? So I, you know, <laughs> it, this example, you know, my friends, they either need to <laughs> have a hard conversation and figure out how they can both get their needs met. And there's going to be some kind of compromising there because they have opposite needs in this case or they're going to have to break up, but something has to happen. They can't just keep stringing this out. But since they're both nice people, right? They're both nice people and they're both very giving people. They're, they're both people who are other oriented. They always are looking out for the other one. So neither of them are really speaking up for themselves or getting their needs met. So something for some of you is same kind of thing, right? You guys need to like work up the guts, work up the balls to insist <laughs> that you are getting what you need. And you know, if, if that's at work, if that's in your love life, if that's in your friendships, if that's with yourself, right? Are you allowing yourself, are you giving yourself what you need? Are you allowing yourself all the things that you need? Like you need to <laughs> um, allow allow all parts of yourself to be expressed, allow all parts of yourself to be listened to because there's just this, this imbalance of like self and other, right? Too much attention, too much energy being given away to others and not enough energy being kept for yourself. And I think your reading is shorter than the other ones. Um, no less intense really, but I think I don't have anything else to add to that. Um, so good luck guys. Take a big, big deep breath. Let the truth be told. Open your hearts and let the truth flow from your heart. I love you guys. Talk to you later. Bye. Hey, card number four. Welcome to your reading. I've got one chakra card here and then I'm going to draw additional tarot cards to kind of see how your balance is. So, ooh, what? <laughs> That's funny. It's the balance card. <laughs> Root chakra. We have a yin yang here. I actually want to check the book about this. Okay, that's really funny because um, I thought maybe that the book would have something specific to say, but it just talks about how you've called this card into your life today to let you know that you need more balance in your life. Something is out of balance. And I'm like, yes, thank you. That That is the topic of this reading. <laughs> um, okay, so um, I'm going to take that as just an indication uh, to keep going with the tarot cards. And also that the, the general theme here is going to have something to do with your root chakra. Um, so, you know, that's to do with your physical environment, your physical body, your security in the world, feelings of, you know, abundance versus scarcity. Inevitably with this, somebody is worrying about their health and somebody is worrying about their money, right? That's the kind of stuff that comes up with this. <laughs> okay. Hanged man. Seven of swords. Queen of Cups. Lovers. J 
justice. The three of pentacles. Has somebody been fighting in their love life? <laughs> um, okay, yeah, bottom of the deck, shadow work. You know, the other piles, the other cards had, like, I got, like, a very specific vibe off them right away. Um, you guys almost feel like the catch-all pile. Like, if you didn't fit with the other three cards, you ended up in this one. Because we have a kind of different different things going on. I th I'm going to try to keep this pretty general because this is going to be playing out in different ways for all of you. But... Honestly, it feels like I'm meant to draw your attention specifically to your energy, like energetics, right? The esoteric idea of everything is energy, right? And you ha you are made of light and you have a like a light body and, you know, chakras and all of that. Um, I think you guys are, are probably, most of you probably already know how to receive energy work, energy healing, whatever. Um, and many of you probably already do it for others or, you know, do it for yourselves. Um, like if you're Reiki people, um, different types of healing, different modalities, whatever it is, you guys already know about energy healing. And it's like start there because your energetics is the root cause of your root chakra problems. <laughs> so if you are, for example, having money problems you don't have enough money okay tackle that from an energetic perspective focus on abundance energetics right um in what ways are you blocking your own flow of abundance what like problematic beliefs do you have about money um stuff like that do do your investigation and so if you have you know or if you have health problems i mean yes do all of your normal um healthcare things also do the energetic investigation go okay like um you know if you broke your foot <laughs> right yes i mean you broke your foot because you fell down the stairs or whatever but what was the energetic purpose there are you being told to slow down um are you being uh like shown that you need to do more self-care right like what what is it there is some there's always the parallel for for you guys. It's really time to some of you, most of you already know this, I think, but it's like double down on okay. Whenever anything happens in reality, our three D reality is the three D mirror, right? Everything in the physical is mirroring something that's happening energetically. A while ago, um, I found a crack in my bathtub, and I was like, how did that? happen. I, I didn't even know bathtubs could get cracks. And I live in, an, in like a relatively new-ish apartment. Um, and I could not figure out how the tub, my, ba my bathtub cracked. And it's been kind of irritating. And but this whole time I've been thinking, hmm, hmm, <laughs> what is the energetic background of the bathtub crack, right? What does it mean? And I could not for the life of me figure it out until yesterday when I was talking to my husband about my own kind of energy imbalances I've been feeling like I said at the beginning of the video you know like oversensitive and like psychically sensitive and I've been feeling kind of strung out like overwhelmed by other people's energy and just kind of all over the place and like I couldn't figure it out I'm um, like the things that I used to do to bring myself back into balance suddenly weren't working and I couldn't figure it out my husband told me you have a leak <laughs> right and then then I immediately remembered the crack in my bathtub and I was like I'm like the bathtub. I have a crack. <laughs> I have a crack in my, you know, energetic system somewhere. There is a little crack and it's like a little bit of my energy is leaking out and a little bit of my energy, like other energy is leaking in and I just need to seal that crack up, you know? So I'm kind of going hermit mode to like work on my hermetic seal, right? To seal my crack up. <laughs> so same kind of thing with you guys, right? Whatever it is for you, think about the energetics of it. And you guys already have been doing that because you've been in this shadow work, right? This is the bottom of your deck. You've been in the shadow work. You've been feeling something. Something has been coming up. And the shadow work that you've been doing is like rippling out. Rippling out. You know, I I bet, like, I, I wish we could know. This is one of those things that unless you were like the world's most talented, 
like seer, you probably might never find out, but there's probably things that are happening to you right now that are like a direct, direct mirror of something that happened to you in like Atlantis, for example, or, or like in, in some kind of past life, you know, like you, experiencing the same inner, in, in, like energy, I was trying to say injury, <laughs> injury, experiencing the same injury that you had before, experiencing the same type of scary thing that happened before, or, you know, if you're, maybe your roof collapsed and that happened to you before, right? Something is happening exactly that's happening to you before. And the invitation is to like handle it better this time, handle it better this time. Um, of course, that's easier said than done, but this time you are so much more high frequency than you were in that other life because you have never been this high frequency on earth. So this time you're going to do it better. And kind of a weird feeling from these cards because I put them like this because these are the energies that are kind of lighter. You know, they're on the higher end of the scale. These are the energies that are heavier and kind of weighing you down. Interesting to get good cards weighing you down, right? So that's the interesting thing. How is this lover's card weighing you down? Just feel into that for a sec. How is justice weighing you down? Kind of strange, right? <laughs> and then how is Three of Pentacles, teamwork. How is your community weighing you down? <laughs> so, of course, you could go, well, you know, love, romance, community, justice. These are all amazing things. How could they possibly be weighing me down? Well, it's, I feel like you guys are, some of you are like me. You've got like a leak, right? <laughs> so you might need to take a step back energetically to get used to your new level of psychic sensitivity or emotional sensitivity or whatever it is. You just need some space, some time away from the energies that are overwhelming you. For some of you, it's, you know, your romantic partner. For some of you, it's the whole human collective, or maybe it's people at work. Um, for some of you with this justice card, it's like your desire to see justice on the planet is putting you off of balance, right? Um, like this could be somebody spending too much time watching the news and getting upset about it, right? Your, your desire to seek justice is throwing you off of balance. Um, and I talked a bit about that, I think, in pile two, um, where, you know, if your desire to seek justice, is it is it really about coming into perfect balance or is it about finding revenge or, right? Or like imposing punitive justice, right? If that's the case, just remember, drop back into unconditional love, right? Sometimes the justice card, this Libra energy can be a little bit like conditional love, right? It can be a little bit conditional sometimes in its lower frequencies. Um, so remember that the solution is unconditional love. If you feel like this justice energy is kind of getting you out of balance. So you guys just, you need some space. You need some hermit mode time. You need like, just to breathe. Like <laughs> go sit in the middle of an empty field and just breathe, like just breathe. I, I feel like you guys have a lot of energetic gravity. Like you are like advanced, you know, high vibrational souls that gather other souls around you because they can feel your light, right? It's like they want, it's like you're a fire and they want to warm your hands. Wow. Wow, my palm is so warm. I can, <laughs> that is, I've never, I never feel that before. Weird. Um, yeah, so <laughs> you guys are like a blazing, blazing fire out in the world and people want to come and like warm, warm themselves around your fire, but It might be a bit much for you right now. You need to give yourself that space, that time, that self-care so that you can go back and you can be the light from a place of overflow. Like I always say, right? You know, you don't want to just be letting your cup run dry. You only want to be giving to others what overflows from you. And as you continue to walk your path, you will find that you become more and more and more overflowing, right? You will in the future have like a more unending source of unconditional love and a more unending source of like, you'll be more, eventually you'll be more like the sun where you just blaze like the sun and you feed the whole solar system with your light, right? But right now you're still 
working your way back up to that level. So you're at this point, you are not, <laughs> you are not an, a, like an unending source, right? You are still at this point subject to the limitations of your human body and your human consciousness. So give yourself the time. And it's like, definitely over here, <laughs> give yourself the time, the hanged man, take a break, find a new perspective, right? With this hanged man card, this could mean like, if anybody has been thinking about going on a meditation retreat for like 10 days, or even if maybe it's just three days, one day, an hour, whatever, <laughs> take your time, take that time out. This is like the universe really wants somebody, like really wants me to tell somebody to take a break, take a vacation, like take a time off, right? Like you guys need, need, need space and silence and solitude because, um, Seven of Swords, um, in this context, this is, there is something inside of you that needs to be expressed that you've been repressing or ignoring, or maybe you've just been so busy, you've just been so busy, you've been so overwhelmed by the needs of others, you've been so overwhelmed by your responsibilities in the world that there's like, almost like a crystal. There's like a gift. There's a gift waiting inside of you and you haven't quite gotten to it yet. It's there, but you've just been so busy. You haven't been able to see it. So you need to go into this quiet space. You need to give yourself the space so that you can just sit there and be with yourself and discover your inner gifts, discover the thing that you have to express to the world that you have to share the world with the world. It's like, there's a gift, like literally wrapped up waiting inside of yourself. And you just need to like take a minute to find it and then unwrap it. And then there's this beautiful gift that's coming for you, like from inside of yourself. It's like a gift straight from your higher self. Queen of Cups, right? <laughs> Allow yourself to nurture yourself for once. You guys, I think are nurturing others. Some of you are probably parents <laughs> um, or, you know, you work in a, in a service industry and, um, you know, that includes people who are like healthcare workers, mental healthcare workers, teachers, but also people who work in food service or in retail, right? You guys are all in different ways, like taking care of others and giving your energy away to others all the time. And it's, that isn't an important part of your service, but unfortunately the way, you know, if this is a, if this is a family thing or a job thing, you know, society has set it up so that you're basically f almost forced, right? You're almost forced to give too much of yourself away. And, you know, for years and years and years and years and years at a time with never a proper vacation. And that's just not sustainable. It is not sustainable. Um, yeah. So you guys just need to come back into your own center space, your own center space, your own space, your own space. <laughs> like I could repeat that all day. It feels like when I, when, I, when I feel very compelled to repeat a message, that means that somebody is still not quite getting the picture. <laughs> you know, when, when, a, when a message comes through like quantum, right? It, it's, I, it's like, I, you know, I receive it, but this is how it works for everybody. This is how you also receive messages, right? We receive a quantum package of data and it's all bundled up into like one little tiny package. And the way the human unpacks that and unwinds it and translates a quantum message is like parts will just keep getting repeated until we get the picture, right? So if I can just, if I, you know, if I receive it like an energy to transmit to you guys and I can just say it in a nice linear way, that means I didn't have to repeat myself because it just kept getting accepted, right? But if the message gets rejected and comes back at me, energetically speaking, then I, I want to repeat it because I'm like, no, you, like this has to be transmitted. This has to be transmitted. So I could say over and over and over again, you guys, like somebody needs to take time for themselves. Somebody needs time off somebody needs solitude somebody like needs this and i think <laughs> i think now whoever was holding out on that um is finally getting the picture because so somebody might be feeling like that it's impossible but that is the belief you're being asked to rewire like re reach out to your partner to your family to like 
a social system, whatever it is, if you, if you, if you feel like this is impossible, it's not, right? Ask the universe to show you the way. Ask the universe to show you the way because you need this. The universe will set this up for you. The universe is saying, trust us, right? Trust the universe. Trust that it is meant for you to have some time and some space for yourself. It is, you are, you are requiring it. It is meant for you. You just need to trust that if you start taking the little baby steps, then it will work out and, you know, there's potential here for somebody to like go on a weekend getaway and come back completely rejuvenated or somebody to go on a meditation retreat and come back like com having just received like a massive download and upgrade from their higher self or just, you know, even if it's just vegging out on the couch for a weekend going like, wow, like I can't believe how much I needed that. Or maybe, you, you know, you finally take a break so you can watch a movie and the movie you watch, you find out that it's actually like transmitting multi-dimensional codes and you thought it was just some silly Hollywood movie but secretly like it's way more amazing than you thought it was and you have like a spiritual experience watching the movie that you finally took time to watch right this is like yep yep <laughs> um okay um I'm trying to get one more I want one more card <sighs> So I, just to be clear, I don't really feel like you guys need to work on energetic protection so much. Um, most of you have probably gotten pretty good at energetic protection in the past. This feels like... There is a new way of being balanced that you need to discover this is this like weird pocket of energy you're going through um is guiding you to a place where you will discover a higher level of balance a higher level of inner balance or like a deeper level of inner balance right you had ways ways in the past and those worked and like why why do you feel like things are unraveling now like why now right it's because you've leveled up into this uh, higher frequency range where the energies are faster and more intense and coming at you from all angles so you need a deeper level of inner peace a deeper level of stability and that is what you're learning through this that is what you're learning that is like the point of all of this um and once you come into that place of inner peace paired with human level 3d habits that support your inner peace right like maybe it's developing a new diet that works for you or maybe it's developing a new schedule where you work less or where you have an ironclad hour to yourself every day. I remember um, like last year, like my family life was really hectic and, or, you know, it wasn't last year. I guess it was like two years ago, right? Before, before 2020, <laughs> um, my family life was really hectic and I instituted something I called magic hour. <laughs> and I would tell my husband and my stepson, I would just... It, when I felt overwhelmed, I would just say magic hour and I would go into my bedroom and lock the door. And the agreement was that nobody would come into my, it, nobody would knock on that door unless there was a fire or someone was bleeding out. <laughs> I was like, magic hour is sovereign. Like, I don't want to hear a peep from anybody during magic hour. And that's how I dealt with it, right? I, I, I just had to institute, like, I had to institute myself an hour every day. <laughs> um, so yeah, you know, it's like, yes, it's your, it's about your inner peace, but for most of you, there's going to have to be something that you shift in your physical life to support your inner peace, because you might need more solitude than you needed before. Or you might need to work less than you, than you did before, right? It's because now your, your path is being redirected so that your path is now about your spiritual journey. It's not really about the 3D things that you did before. You're not trying to like mess around in the 3D. You're trying to ascend. So you might need to change just sometimes even drastic things maybe somebody needs to move to somewhere where you can live on the beach right whatever it is it can be done just ask the universe to show you the way and it will be done the fields of forgiveness as you journey past resentment now and then stopping only to recognize its desolate surroundings, decide you no longer want to linger on the bumpy road of disappointment. A new way of living will emerge, one that is full of surprises and perfectly timed synchronicities. Set your burdens down, 
Let go of what delays your progress and welcome in exchange the tender but stable roots of new beginnings. Enter the field of forgiveness where enchantment awaits you. I'm going to leave you guys there. Sending you so much love and light. Bye.